My name is Tara and I'm from Central Florida, born and raised in Kissimmee. I grew up under a single mother and grandparents and we were not raised in a Christian home. So we didn't know the Lord. So I lived like a good life. It wasn't, we had everything we always needed, um, but we didn't know Jesus. And so technically we were a broken home because we didn't know Jesus. When I was around nine years old, um, I was sexually assaulted by a family member. And I remember in that moment um, feeling confused, angry. I didn't know why this happened. Later on, it was said that we didn't press charges. And so I felt like unjust and I felt I I'd, I'd wanted someone to fight for me. That led me down a pathway a few years later into high school. And so I started dating the popular guy, but I was forced into doing drugs and I didn't even want to touch drugs. Not only was he physically abusive, but he was mentally abusive. And so I went down this pathway. I started becoming suicidal. Um, even in, in doing drugs, I was overdosing. And um, he even tried to kill me um, one time, like kidnapped me against my will and, and almost slit my throat. So during one of the times of the over, I was overdosing, I had a friend who was a believer. I, I would call her when I was in these like circumstances of literally life and death. I would call her and I'd be like, Jess, like I, I, need, I need you to pray for me. I know you, I know you hear God. I know you talk to whoever God is. So please pray for me like it's life and death. She would pray for me and she would just say, God, I pray, Lord, that you have mercy on Tara, like have mercy on her. Jesus, cover her with your blood. And instantly I would get healed, miraculous, from an overdose, I would get instantly healed. So from her doing that and from her being such a light um, of Jesus, I ended up wanting to know the God that she served. And so I ended up going to church with them and going to a youth camp. The pastor had us sitting on the floor praying, um, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. And he had us consistently repeating that. And all of a sudden, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was filled instantly with the Holy Spirit. It felt like a light bulb got clicked on. I just, I, I felt God's love, His presence all in one. And I was just bawling my eyes. I was just crying, just crying and just thanking God for who He was. Six months after the youth camp, I ended up falling away from God. And the reason why was because Number one, me, I, I had my own desires and things that I wanted to do. I knew Jesus, but the church that I went to didn't preach the full counsel of God. So I thought that all you had to say was, Jesus, forgive me, I'm forgiven, and then I live how I want to live. Graduated, I got my cosmetology license, and I wasn't making the money that I wanted to make. And so I ended up going to work at a strip club. And I started bartending and go-go dancing, and I started living um, a, a reckless lifestyle, thinking that, you know, well, well, Jesus covers me, you know, I have, I have the gifts, I'm good. Jesus still loves me, but I can live how I want to live as long as I claim his name. Within four years of, of doing this stuff, I, I ended up having a dream. And in the dream, um, I, Jesus was coming back and I was racing home in my car and I was trying to get home. And I got in a car accident. And in the car accident, my car disintegrated and um, I saw my soul and my spirit come out of my body. And I knew in that moment that I wasted everything God had planned for my life. And it was just this this like horrible, horrible feeling. Um, I, I still feel it to this day of what I felt in that dream. And I saw my spirit come out of my body and started falling into this bottomless pit. And um, I woke up screaming because I'm like, I know Jesus. Like, why, why am I falling in that bottomless pit if I know Jesus? Something's wrong, something's not right. And I didn't, I did everything out of ignorance. I didn't know God, I didn't know his word. And so I lived this lifestyle out of ignorance, thinking that it was okay. And so um, I woke up from that dream and I started screaming, crying, and my roommate had to like calm me down. And she's like, it's fine, it's fine. And I was uh, inside, like it was just the conviction of the Holy Spirit now that I know, you know, convicting me, turn from your lifestyle, Tara, like turn, turn, like come back to me, come back to me. I was working in the club, it was a regular night, and, and within two hours, I heard gunshots. I remember trying to run out of the club and I was praying to God. I was like, God, I cannot die in this club. Like, I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen. God, please, like, I cannot die in this club. And so I ended up getting out, praise God, and running as fast as I could. I remember I, I just ran. 
that next morning I woke up and it was just so surreal and I was like, God, I, I think you want me to really leave this lifestyle. I think you I think you really want something with me. And so I ended up going to church the following week. And at this church, the pastor spoke the true word of God. He spoke the full counsel of God. And I was like, wow, this is so different. I've I've never, I'm so used to prosperity, claim it, name it, claim it, and all this stuff. And so this was like, wait, like we serve a holy God? I was getting convicted with every Sunday that passed. One Sunday I went to church and the pastor didn't know me. And all of a sudden in the middle of the service, he turns and he didn't know me, I didn't know him. And he turns and he pointed at me and he went like this, he said, God says you're lukewarm and he's about to spit you out of his mouth. And I felt the holiness and the presence of God come upon me. And I, I knew it was for me and I knew God was doing a work inside of me. And so I was trembling under the fear of God. And although it hurt, I needed that. I was getting ready for work to go to the club. And I heard the Lord say to me, um, Tara, I want you to leave your job tonight. And I said, Lord, I, I can't tonight. I got to put two weeks. Like, let me do at least my two weeks. You know, Lord, let me do, I'm, I'm already dressed. I'm already ready. I have my makeup, everything done. Let, let me put my two weeks in. So I started, I continued. I ignored the voice. I heard it again. Tara, I want you to leave your job tonight. Lord, I don't, I don't want to look bad. That's not professional. I, I can't just leave my job. They need me. They need me tonight. And then the Lord spoke a third time and he said, Tara, if you do not leave your job tonight, you're going to lose everything I have for you in your future. And all of a sudden, I felt this presence come in my room. From the, I felt it hit the doorway and come all the way around to my bathroom and my closet where I was at. And I was overwhelmed with, with his presence and his holiness. And I, it was like, it wasn't like, it was the holiness of God. It was the fear of God. It was like the king came in my room and I felt him so strongly. And then I just finally said like, Jesus, I give you my life. Like I give you my life. I give it to you. Like whatever you want, I give it to you. You can take it, God. I don't want this anymore. And instantly in that moment, that thing that was on my back broken off of me in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of bondage, of sexual addiction, everything that was in my life got broken off of me in that second. And I've been free since that day. Since surrendering, surrendering my life five years ago, Jesus broke everything off of me, the tormenting spirits that would torment me day and night, suicidal spirits broken off completely. I did not walk that anymore. Tara's story breaks your heart, doesn't it? You just can't imagine her at eight or nine years old and, and having to go through all that she went through, looking for person after person to to defend her, to stand up for her. Finally, she met Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ not only stood up for her on the cross for her sins, but he also began to influence her and change her life drastically. She's a totally different lady than she was when she was a young person. She's filled with confidence. She's filled with hope because of Jesus Christ. Maybe you have faced a similar sort of thing in your life. Maybe not the kind of abuse that she went through, but you were just longing for somebody to give you purpose in life, to defend you. I want you to know that Jesus defended you. The Bible says this, that we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Without God, there is no hope. But through Jesus Christ, there is all hope. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you'll live forever. He said this, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father except through me. There's only one way to connect with God, and that is through your belief in Jesus Christ. Tara would have prayed a very simple prayer to begin her journey with Jesus. You can pray the same prayer with me right now. If you're watching here in the United States or Australia, New Zealand, maybe you're watching in India or somewhere in the Middle East or in Iceland, elsewhere in Europe, you can say a simple prayer even if you're watching on your phone right now with me, you can simply say, God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus. I know that he died for my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. I make you my Lord today. I follow you. I want the peace that Tara has. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, we want to say congratulations here at Influence Living. But I also want to let you know it's more than just one little prayer. It's now beginning a journey with God. 
And how do you really do that? You get to know God. How do you get to know, to know God? Talk to Him. He hears your prayers, the Bible says. Prayer is communication, talking to Him. Begin to read in the Christian Bible who Jesus is. Go to the book of John. Go to a local Christian church near you and say, listen, I've decided to follow Jesus. What do I do? If they don't help you, go to a church that will. And then finally, at Influence Living, we'd love to know your story. We'd love to be praying for you. You could contact us. You see the details right there on your screen, the P.O. Box here in Orlando, Florida. You can write us or you can email us. We'd also like to hear your God story. If you're already a believer, you have a great story that we could use on Influence Living, write us right there. Email us, wade at influenceliving.com. You can also message us on Facebook. Go to Facebook, search for Influence Living and message us there or... You can also find previous programs of Influence Living on YouTube. Just search for Influence Living. We would love to hear from you. Well, that about does it for this edition of Influence Living. I trust that you've enjoyed watching it with us. One more thing now, if you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church, and we would love to have you join us sometime. Go to greenwaychurch.com. That's greenwaychurch.com. You can find out our service times. You can also connect with us online. So you can watch our services, see some of our other programming and so forth. We would love to have you do so. Well, until next time, we'll see you later right here on Influence Living. Bye-bye.